Welcome to this video. Today we'll be looking at the area of shapes and focusing on regular shapes. So let's have a look. First of all, let's consider measurements in one, two, and three dimensions. If we're measuring in one dimension, traditionally we look at things like length, one centimeter. If we're looking in two dimensions, we're looking at things involving area. Okay, measurements have got height and length. One centimeter squared, so we've got a centimeter here for the length and a centimeter squared for the area. And finally, also, you can look at three-dimensional measurements that's got, for example, your length, your width, and your depth. So this could be a volume, okay, measured in centimeters cubed. We'll look at that in later videos. So today we'll be focusing on two-dimensional measurements, effectively like a, a flat surface, like a table top or a desktop, okay? And we'll be looking at units of measurement in centimeters squared. So the most simple scenario where we have is where you've got repeating units of measurement. So here I have a block one centimeter long and one centimeter high. So that gives me an area of one centimeter by one centimeter or one centimeter squared. If I have two such blocks, I have two centimeters squared. Three blocks, three centimeters squared. Up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten blocks here together gives me ten centimeters squared. They're very easy to visualize and work out. So rectangles are quite straightforward. Here I have a three by five rectangle, which means I'm one, two, three, four, five centimeter blocks across and one, two, three centimeter blocks high. Now if I count them all up, that gives me one row of five, two row of five, three row of five, that gives me 15 centimeters squared. The equation for this to make this a little bit quicker is to simply measure and multiply the length by the width, the length being one side length and the width being the other, okay? These double dash, double dash means these two particular uh, side lengths are equal and single dash, single dash, they're equal as well, which is what you expect for a rectangle. Quick example, 10 by five measured rectangle. We wanna find the area. You notice with these equations, we're putting all the calculations directly underneath each other. We're not writing from left to right like you would an English essay. We are putting them vertically underneath each other. Underneath each other. Area equals question mark, that's what we're trying to solve. The length is 10, the width is five. Area equals length times width. And we don't bother with the multiplying symbol for times but I've added in here to show you what we're doing. Uh, a lot of equations in maths and science remove the multiplication. So they just say A equals LW. That means length of 10 times width of five. 10 fives are 50. And the area of course is centimeters by centimeters. So it's centimeters squared. Next shape is a triangle. Okay, let's consider a triangle that's got a base of five and a height of three. Here in the background, I've got my still my rectangle of three and five. And you should be able to see that it is covering exactly half of the area of the full rectangle. Okay, let's look at this left-hand side section here. we we'll use that dotted line as an edge. Half of it's red, half of it's blue. The right-hand side, the larger, smaller, oh, the rad, larger of the second made rectangles. Half red, half blue. So the area of a triangle is half that of the rectangle. And we just learned a second ago that the area of a rectangle is base times height, so the area of the triangle is half of the base times the height. A quick example, here we have a triangle, six centimeters high, eight centimeters on the base. Area equals question mark, base equals eight centimeters, height equals six centimeters. That's all the information we're writing down. We want to calculate the area, and this is what we know, the base and the height. We include our equation, area of a triangle is half the base times height, and we sub in our values, half of eight, the base, times six, the height, gives me a value of 24. And again, it's area, so it's centimeters squared. Let's move on to a rhombus. Rhombus is very similar. We've got one, two, three, four side lengths of the same size. Again, this is five high and three wide. If we move that across upon our grid, three wide and five high, you can see even easier that this is definitely covering exactly half. If we were to look at this bottom quarter, half is red, half is blue. The right-hand side bottom quarter, half is red, half is blue, and the same for the top two quarters. So clearly, a rhombus covers half the area of the rectangle of the same height and width. So our equation here, instead of using height and width for rhombuses, we use y's for the height and x for the width. You can think of this much like a graph that you've done in, in maths before, where the vertical axis is always the y-axis and the horizontal axis is always the x-axis. So half x times y. A quick example. Here's a rhombus with a height of seven and a width going across of four. So we want to find the area. The y value is seven, the x value is four, 
Our equation for the area of a rhombus is half x times y. So we sub in our x of 4, half times 4 times y is 7. So half of 4 times 7 gives me 14. And again, it's area, so it's centimeters squared. We must have the right units. Our next shape is a kite. looks very similar to a rhombus, except the top two lengths are equal. The bottom two lengths are equal, but the top and bottom are actually different. Okay, It's a little bit shorter on the top than the one down the bottom. If we transfer that across to our nice little 3 by 5 rectangle, you can see again, similar to the rhombus, this little top rectangle is half red, half blue. And this rectangle to the right is half red, half blue. And the same with the bottom ones. So again, much like the rhombus, the area of a kite is half that of the rectangle that surrounds it. So again, y when you graph is the vertical on a graph and x is the horizontal. So the area of a kite is half times x times y. An example, I've got here a height of 8 and a base of 5. Okay, so let's have a look. Area, we're trying to solve that, is our question mark. That's what we're trying to solve. Our height, vertical, is 8 centimeters. Our base, horizontal, is 5. Our equation to work out the area of a kite is a half x times y. Half times x was 5, y was 8. A half of 5 times 8 is 20 centimeters squared. Parallelograms look a bit confusing, but actually quite simple. If we were to move our parallel again, parallelogram over, we've got a 3 centimeter high parallelogram, a 5 centimeter wide parallelogram. We move it across. This little bit, it's actually covering our 3 by 5 rectangle. We can't see it. But this bit here, if I were to move that, it fits perfectly here and generates a 3 by 5 rectangle. So the area of a parallelogram is equal to the area of the rectangle of the same base and height. So we can use the base of a parallelogram and we can use the height of the parallelogram. Looks like I've got a spelling mistake in the word parallelogram. That's bad form. Don't make that mistake. So calculate the area of the following parallelogram. It's got a base of 6 and a height of 2. The area is question mark. The base is 6. Height is 2. And the equation we've got is area equals base times height. Base of 6, height of 2, 6 twos is 12. Quite simple for the parallelograms. This parallelogram has an area of 12 centimetres squared because it's centimetres times centimetres. becomes centimetres squared. Trapezium. Trapezium has got two parallel lines and the sides are then joined from the left side, left side, right side, right side. These look a little bit different. But let's look. If I have again here, it's a 3 it's a 3 on the side. I've driven, drawn here, sorry, a 3 by 5 underneath the, the rectangle we've been using. Now, if I went halfway from the edge of the 3 and the edge of the 5, halfway there, and cut it. And if I went from, on the right-hand side, from the edge of the 3 on the top short parallel line to the edge of the 7, halfway across, and cut it, you'll notice that if I rotate this and move it, it fits in perfectly. This one fits in perfectly again to form a 3 by 5 rectangle. So the equation I've got, the area of a trapezium is equal to its height multiplied by its average base. As two, these two parallel, the average of the 7 and the 3. Let's look at some examples. Okay, So if we consider the top parallel line to be length A and the bottom parallel line to be length B, A plus B, when I divide by 2, will work out the average of these two, and then I multiply it by the height. So if I go back one. Here, 7 plus 3 gives me 10. Divide that by 2 gives me an average of 5. And 5 by height of 3 gives me 15. So let's look at an example. Here's one that's not symmetrical. What I've done is I've dragged the edge of my 4 centimeter parallel line at the top closer to the left-hand side than it is to the right-hand side. But the equation holds true. The area is question mark. The short parallel line has a length of 4. The long parallel line has a length of 8. The height as a height of 6. And here's our equation. Let's work out, first of all, the average of the two parallel lines, a plus b, divided by 2. a is 4, b is 8. I divide that by 2, or multiply by half is the same as divide by 2. Sorry if I'm confusing people there. Multiplying by a half is the same as divide by 2. And then I'm going to multiply that by the height, which is 6. So I've taken my a, put in the 4, taken my b, put in the 8, taken my h, put in the 6, Done my maths, 
I do my brackets first with bod mass. 8 plus 4 gives me 12. A half times 12 times 6 gives me an area of 36 centimetres squared. Let's look at our last two. Looking at circular shapes. Area of a circle. Let's consider, if I divided my circle into quarters, I can take one of these sectors, plus another, plus another, plus another. So this area here is actually the same area as my circle. Bit messy, doesn't give us much of an idea at the moment. Let's make that a bit smaller. Let's turn that into eight sectors. So I've got one, two, three, four on the bottom, and one, two, three, four on the top. Fit them all nicely together. That area of our circle is the same as this area of the collected or individual sectors. Let's divide it again in two. So I've now got eight along the bottom for the first half, and then the second half of sectors are eight on the top. Starting to look more like a regular shape. Do it one more time, divide it again. Now I've got 16 on the bottom, 16 on the top, and that almost looks like a rectangle. Okay, so in this situation, if we make our sectors smaller and smaller, as in the video you're about to watch, you find that along the bottom, the bottom here is half of my sectors. So from here all the way around to halfway, all the edges would add up. So this bottom adds up to half of the total circumference. The video I'm about to show you will demonstrate this a bit better. But a full circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. So half of it, that will have a length of pi r. All those individual bases, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way around to halfway are on the bottom here. They add up to pi r, which is half of the circumference of a circle. The other half of the circumference from the top around again to the bottom are the edges up here of the other half of the sectors. So this almost rectangle, if I multiply pi r by the height of one of these wedges, which is effectively the radius, I end up with an area of pi r squared. We'll watch the video now. Pi r squared gives you the area of a circle. But where does pi r squared come from? First, we'll draw a circle and fill in its area. Next, we will divide it into large equal parts and arrange them in a rectangular formation. As you can see, it barely resembles a rectangle. So next, we will divide the circle into small equal pieces and we will arrange them in the same manner. You can see that it appears more like a rectangle. So, if we divide the circle into even more smaller pieces, you can see that every time the shape becomes more like a rectangle. So, how small must we divide a circle before we can get a perfect rectangle? Well, we can keep on dividing the circle into small, smaller, or the smallest pieces you can make. But the answer is to divide the circle infinitely many times until we cannot distinguish the lines and eventually the circle can now become a perfect rectangle. So, the area of the circle is equal to the area of the rectangle, which is equal to base times height. The height of the rectangle, as you can see, is the same as the radius. So height is equal to radius. To find the base, we need to look at the circumference of the circle. And when we compare the base and the circumference, we can see that the base is equal to one half the circumference. Remember that the circumference is equal to 2 pi r. When we combine it with 1 half, the 2's cancel out, and base is equal to pi r. So now, base times height becomes pi r times r. Combine the r's together, and we have pi r squared, which is equal to the area of the rectangle, which is equal to the area of the circle. Okay, hopefully that video made some sense in terms of how we work out the area of a circle in terms of very, very small sectors. So let's use this as an example. Let's work out the area of a circle of radius 5 centimeters. So area is question mark, radius is 5. The equation is area equals pi r squared, which is pi times the radius squared. 
The radius in this case is five. We sub our number in. Five squared becomes 25. So the area of this circle is going to be 25 lots of pi. Now pi is a number, it's 3.14, and this goes on infinitely. So we round that and use our calculator for pi, and we'll do a video on pi one day soon and explain that in a little more detail. So pi times 25 comes out to a rounded value of 78.5 centimeters squared for this entire circle. Finally, let's look at the area of a sector. A sector, if you consider a whole circle as a pi, a sector is a slice of the pi, it's a piece of the pi. So if you want to work out how much area does this red sector have, I want to work out the total area of the circle and then work out what fraction is this sector of the entire circle. And the easiest way to do that is to look at the angle of the sector and divide that by the angle of a complete circle, which is 360. So if I had a whole semicircle, if my red section was half the circle, that would have an angle of 180 degrees. 180 over 360 would give me a half, and I'd have half of the total area. If my angle is 90 degrees, 90 over 360 would give me one quarter. It would be one quarter of the total area. So to work out the area of a sector, we look at its angle, we divide it by 360 to work out what fraction it is of the entire circle, and then we multiply it by the total area of the full circle of that radius, pi r squared. So here's our equation. The area of a sector is its angle, internal angle between these two sides, divided by 360 times the area of what would be the entire circle of pi r squared. So my example here is I've got a sector of radius four and it's got an angle of 30 degrees. Area equals question mark, radius equals four. Angle is 30 degrees. The equation we have here, let's sub in our angle of 30 and our radius of four. Now 30 over 360 comes out to one on 12. At this point, I've used my calculator. One on 12 times pi times this four squared gives me 16. That tells me the area of this sector will be 4.2 centimeters squared. Look, thank you for watching. I hope this has made some sense in terms of working out the area of regular shapes. If you like this video, don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.